morning. It's great to uh, see all of you here uh, this morning. Uh, Psalm 9, 7 and 8 says, The Lord reigns forever. He rules the world with righteousness and judges the people with equity. Amen? So today is the final day of the Masters Golf Tournament. And tomorrow is the final day to file your income taxes for last year, which is kind of ironic because two of the things people most often lie about are the scores on their golf game and their income on their taxes. Just tell the truth. Today, uh, we're beginning a new sermon series for uh, the next six or seven weeks on Christ and our character. Uh, we're going to be looking at different stories from the Bible and different stories from our world to see the kind of character God wants us to have as we live out our faith in this crazy, messy world. Today, we begin with the character trait of openness. And we begin with the story of Paul Kingsnorth. Paul Kingsnorth is an award-winning poet and novelist from Ireland. For many years, he was a campaigner for the environmental movement. In a conversation with the Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, he described growing up in a home where religion was largely irrelevant. Exposure to school hymns and occasional visits to church during childhood gave way to a period of rebellious teenage atheism. But the flirtation with atheism was never very convincing. At the same time he was mocking religion, he was a real lover of fantasy literature and a great believer in ghosts and the supernatural. He went on this fumbling spiritual quest. For a number of years, he practiced Zen Buddhism. But the focus there was only on looking within yourself. And he wanted to look outward to worship something. So he got involved in witchcraft. And he tried worshiping nature. And he joined a Wiccan coven. Despite its claims to ancient origins, he found it was really just a New Age religion invented in the 60s. It was a mixture of goddess worship, mystery traditions, and occult teaching. He said, you mix it all together, and it's really just an excuse to worship nature in the woods. Something was still missing. In his professional life, he was becoming increasingly disillusioned with the corporate nature of the environmental movement. He felt it had been hijacked by technological industrialism that he had once opposed. He came to realize the limits of human power to save the planet, which ended up just making tyrants out of good people. He saw that nature needed a savior bigger than itself, and so did human beings. He said he was taken by surprise one night when his wife predicted he would become a Christian. But he knew she was more spiritually intelligent than he was. And he started to feel like he was being dragged out of Wicca. He said, there are all sorts of strange forces at work in our world we are not aware of. He had been looking for God, and he found that Christ had come looking for him. 
He had gone looking for Buddhism and Wicca and witchcraft because he thought they fit how he viewed the world. And he didn't think Christianity fit his worldview at all. And he honestly didn't want to be a Christian. But he started having these strange experiences. He started having dreams and meeting Christians every five minutes. He started running these writing schools and having these church vicars come to him and give him, his, give him their sermons and ask for his feedback. People he had known for years started telling him they were Christians. He felt like he was being hunted by Jesus. He reluctantly finally gave in and gave his life to Christ. And he became a believer. His journey is a sign of the times we are living in today. People are searching for a story that makes sense of their lives. Paul Kingsnorth was surprised that the story that actually makes the most sense of our world is the Christian story. He had discounted it as a young person. But after trying other religions and other belief systems, he came to the conclusion that all of them were really pointing him back to the Christian story. His life was changed when he believed in Christ. He joined a church and he started living his life according to the ancient, historic, orthodox teachings of the church. His story reminds me a little bit of the story we just read in Acts chapter 8. This is a story of Philip, who was one of the first seven people in the Bible to be chosen as a deacon. Deacons were chosen to wait on tables and take care of the poor. And in this story, Philip goes on a journey from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now, we know about the horrible situation going on in Gaza today, where the terrorist group Hamas has brutally kidnapped, raped, and murdered innocent Jewish people. They have started a war with Israel. And the Palestinians who live there are suffering greatly. The Christians and the church in Gaza are suffering greatly. But amazingly, Philip obeyed God and went. And as he did so, he met a eunuch from Ethiopia. Eunuchs were men whose physical bodies had been altered so that they were unable to sleep with women. In Matthew 19, 12, Jesus said, there are eunuchs who are born that way. There are some who have been, been made eunuchs by others. And there are those who choose to live that way for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Today, some people might call them a sexual minority. But Philip, who was probably a white man from Greece, has a very interesting encounter with this black man from Ethiopia. And the story tells us that as we live out the character of Christ in our lives, God wants us to do three things. Be open, be curious, and be flexible. First of all, God wants us to be open to divine encounters he might bring into our lives. Like Paul Kingsnorth, who started to have longtime friends tell him they were Christians, 
And you started having pastors come ask him to read their sermons for them. God may give us some unexpected divine encounters with people who are seeking God, but who don't know where to turn. Philip was open to following God from Jerusalem to Gaza, even though when he, he didn't understand why God was sending him there. To his surprise, he meets this Ethiopian eunuch who is not a believer, but who is reading the Bible. But he doesn't understand what he's reading. And when Philip asks him if he gets it, he says, how can I, unless somebody explains it to me? This man was open. He was searching. He's like a lot of people today who are searching for something, but don't really know what they need. We need to be open to new people God might bring to our church, or new people we might encounter throughout the week where we live, work, and play. Philip allowed his life and his plans to be interrupted for the sake of being used by God. Interruptions and intentional actions are essential to divine encounters. Philip allowed God to interrupt his schedule, and then he took intentional steps of obedience. We must be intentional with our lives and with our time if we are going to experience God. Following the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives can cause a disruption to our normal routines. In his book, Letters to the Church, Francis Chan said, when we pray for divine encounters, we're inviting God to orchestrate moments where his love and truth intersect with the lives of those we encounter. The Holy Spirit is at work in the lives of people who are open to him and we're seeing a lot of this today in the lives of younger generations. Philip was open to encountering somebody from another country, from another race, with a different skin color. He was a white man from Greece talking to a black man from Africa. And it shows us the church has always been multicultural, multiracial, multi-ethnic. According to Niche.com, Hollywood is about 42% white, 36% Hispanic, and 9% Asian. The median household income is about $64,000 a year. About 16% of people live below the poverty line. 22% have some college or an associate's degree. 35% have a college degree. And 13% have a master's degree or higher. Given these numbers, we will likely encounter people who are different from us. And like Philip, we need to be open to any new directions where the Spirit might be leading us. The second thing this story tells us is that we need to be curious. This Ethiopian eunuch was curious about what the Bible was saying. He didn't understand it, but he wanted to. And he wasn't afraid to ask questions and admit he didn't understand what the Bible was saying. And he asks Philip, how can I understand this unless somebody explains it to me? This is why we encourage you to come at 930 on Sunday mornings 
through our Sunday school classes, or at seven o'clock on Wednesday night for our Bible study, or any of our other Bible-based small groups. Being open and curious and flexible does not mean we stop believing in the Bible. Philip was having a biblical conversation with this Ethiopian eunuch. And he was as committed to the orthodox teachings of the Bible as we still are today. Being open and curious and flexible are biblical values that help us understand the scriptures better. Curiosity can deepen our relationship with God and lead us to spiritual maturity. And the more we learn from different Christian voices, the more we can understand God. Younger generations today are very curious. And the more we allow them to ask questions, and the more we aren't threatened by them, the more we can encourage their faith. What we refer to today as Gen Z are people born between 1997 and 2012. People who are now between the ages of 12 and 27. The researcher George Barna says 52% of Gen Z believes that doubt is a necessary part of life's journey, but not the end goal. He says that Gen Z are like other generations in that they feel comfortable in their beliefs, but a number of them want to keep digging deeper and learning more about what they believe. So as a church, we want to nurture their curiosity and not shut it down. Eugene Cho, who is a pastor, author, and president CEO of Bread for the World, said that questions are a way to express our doubt and our faith. Our trust in God is not diminished by our questions. Richard Villados, who's an author and pastor in Queens, New York, says that doubt is not the enemy of faith. It's the ground out of which faith often emerges. Doubt and faith are companions on the journey. My friend David Marlowe says, you don't have to know everything or have all the answers. What you really need is the curiosity and the desire to learn more and the ability to ask questions. And Albert Einstein once said, curiosity is more important than knowledge because curiosity leads to more knowledge. The story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter eight encourages us to be curious. This is why we are asking you to submit questions for our summer sermon series. There is no dumb question, and no questions are off limits. Being curious is a good thing. Then thirdly, this story also tells us to be flexible. Philip was not expecting to go from Jerusalem to Gaza on this day. He wasn't expecting to meet an unbeliever from a different country who was reading the Bible. He wasn't expecting this man to become a Christian and want to be baptized. But he was following the leading of the Holy Spirit to be more flexible. And the story shows us that the spirit today is breaking down barriers between people from different groups and different backgrounds. Philip responded to this man's questions by sharing the gospel. He saw that the man's curiosity 
was piqued by scripture. We should be prepared to contextualize the gospel and seize opportunities to share God's love through our evangelism and our discipleship. A sensitivity to the leading of the Spirit is critical to taking advantage of new opportunities that God is now bringing our way. It's often been said that the seven last words of a dying church are, we've never done it that way before. Sometimes we have to be more flexible. We need to understand the changing context of our ministry. So according to Gallup, only 20% of Americans attend church every week. 41% of Americans say they attend church once a month. And 57% of Americans say they seldom or never attend religious services. Only 28% of adults in the LA area look to religion for guidance on right and wrong. Only 27% of adults in the LA metro area believe that there are absolute standards of right and wrong. But for all the declining numbers of Americans attending church, younger people today are actually starting to attend church more. According to Barna, since 2019, the percentage of millennials attending church once a week has increased from 21% to 39%. And most of this increase is with millennials who are not white. Younger generations are curious, and they seem to be coming back to church again. The question is, can we as a church be flexible like the salt company of our earlier days to help younger generations who are looking for purpose and meaning and God. Are there ways we need to be more flexible in our ministry? How do we contextualize the gospel to the Hollywood LA community that doesn't sacrifice the historic orthodox beliefs of the church, but still becomes something that people of today can understand. After Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, the book of Acts said that God whisked him away to the town of Azotus, which was located about 30 miles away. That would be like if God picked you up here in Hollywood this morning and set you down in Anaheim or Malibu or Diamond Bar or Six Flags Magic Mountain. Philip continued to travel on and preach the gospel in all the towns he came to until he reached the city of Caesarea. Philip probably never saw this man ever again. He probably never knew what happened to him or what direction his life took after their divine encounter. All the book of Acts tells us is that this man went on his way rejoicing. His life was changed. He met Christ and he was baptized. And he went forward as a new creation. And from him, the good news of Christ probably started to spread across the continent of Africa. As we seek to be faithful to God and his word in our time and place, God may bring us into contact with people like this Ethiopian eunuch, 
unbelievers from different countries, different races, and different cultures. God may bring us into contact with people like Paul Kingsnorth, who went on this journey from Buddhism to Wicca to Christianity. If you are on a journey this morning and you're still looking for purpose and meaning, and if you are still trying to figure out who God is, we would love to talk with you after the service this morning. For those of us who are Christians, God may lead you into some divine encounters with people who are different from you. And I think this story in Acts chapter 8 is telling us we need to be open, we need to be curious, and we need to be flexible. We know that the Holy Spirit does not lead us in any ways that are contrary to the ways the Spirit has already led us in the written word of God. But God's Spirit is constantly leading us places we have not been before. And he might be leading us to change and adapt our ministry. What is it God might want us to be open and curious and flexible about? Let us pray together. Dear God, we thank you that you are such a creative God and that you are always working in people's hearts and minds that we are often not even aware of. Open our hearts and our minds and our eyes to see where you are at work and to be able to hear the new questions people around us are asking. And help us to be ready with your word to respond to people and to guide them to faith in you and how you can change all of our lives. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen.